This week on Pep Talk, a lot of people, perhaps when they hear the word brand, might think it's just a logo. You and I probably know that's not the case, but explain a little bit about how it all works. You need to understand the difference between brand, branding, marketing, and how they actually lead into each other. A lot of businesses miss these really crucial things out, and then they wonder like, why am I not talking to my relevant target? Why are they not coming to me? When you have that sort of ownership of who you are, what your brand is, who it's for, what it stands for, why you are doing what you are doing, your brand starts then informing your branding and the branding then starts informing the marketing. A lot of business owners miss this big step. You need to ask yourself, are you running a business or are you building a meaningful brand? Our mission is to help 10 million people start and grow a business for free. We want nothing from you. In Pep Talk, we interview industry-leading experts from around the world who share actionable know-how and life lessons. That's why we're excited to partner with GoDaddy to power up Pep Talk. I've been using GoDaddy for years and would promote them on this podcast even if they didn't sponsor us. You can use their free website builder and start your online business at no cost and even get help these days with naming your business. For 40% off GoDaddy tools, click the link in the podcast notes below and use the code GDXPEPTALK. Welcome, Artie, to the podcast. Perhaps we could kick off by you kindly telling the audience a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you firstly, Simon, for, for having me. And yes, so I'm Artie Palmer and I'm a, what I like to say, a purposefully optimistic brand strategist coach and a designer. So having uh, these uh, different skill sets really helps me to help my clients to mindfully define their brand so that they can use it with intent, joy and impact. Wonderful. Well, today we're going to help people understand about brand. If they're interested in bringing their brand up a level or understanding how to build a brand, we're going to discuss that a little bit. We're also going to talk about performance and, and help people hopefully um, learn you know, how to optimise their, their, their performance. So well, why don't we just start with a little bit about how you got your company going? How did you manage to start a business? Did, did you have to raise money or did it just naturally happen? How did you, how did you get it going? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, it, it is a bit of a, there is a long story, but I'll, I'll try and keep it, keep it short. But in, in one word, it was probably, it was rejection. Um, I actually had the opportunity to, to work out in Far East Asia, uh, this ambition to work and travel abroad and all of that kind of thing. So I was in Singapore and then I ended up in Malaysia, uh, for, for 10 years. And then when I moved back to London, now 10, 10 years ago, and helped out with our uh, family business, which then got uh, bought over. And then I was at this sort of a crossroads of like, do I, you know, start my own business or work with a London agency? And that was something I always wanted to do. And um, every time I went for an interview, I kept, I kept getting rejected. And it was simply because, you know, I, I didn't have London agency experience, although I had worked with like global brands um, in the design agency that I had worked with and managed in. Uh, Kuala Lumpur. So which then, um, yeah, got me thinking rather than me trying to look for this, uh, you know, London agency experience and job and stuff, which also at one point, uh, when somebody was interviewing me, and I felt myself, uh, she was sharing the role with me. And it was like, really, I felt myself going into this little, like pigeonhole into this into this role. And in my mind, I'm like, Oh, actually doing that day in, day out, day in, day out. How is that really going to fulfill me is it going to serve me am I really going to enjoy it um so I just made the decision and I was just like right actually rather than focus all my energy here there and everywhere stop looking for this job and just start my own business great and so so I did and in, in the background I'd already started doing a bit of design work for other people so it was actually right shift that focus shift that energy into getting my website done you know doing networking and letting people know that actually, this is what I do. And I'm available to do this. So that that's how it all started. Uh, no, I didn't have any funding. <laughs> I just kind of went for it and, um, you know, kind of supported myself in, in that every stage of the way. But I love the insight there. And I appreciate the honesty as well, the way you share 
this story because I think for a lot of people out there who have been rejected, it can actually affect your confidence and, and make you feel like perhaps you're not good enough. And then you go and create an incredible brand company um, all on your own. Um, of course, you bring people in to help you, but that concept that, that someone who, who doesn't see that you have what it takes and you, you almost prove them wrong, it can almost give you that extra fire that I think, um, but it could also deflate you. You can think, oh, I'm not. So I, I love I love that like failure is almost like, rejection is almost like a superpower. You turn that rejection into a positive and saw it as an opportunity to build something for yourself and then have done so well. So so thank you for being so honest and sharing it because I think a lot of people listening will feel that way. I mean, we've all been rejected and then to to realise that perhaps it's destiny almost, right? You're, you're meant to be rejected so you can't do your own thing. <laughs> yeah, it's only sort of later on you realise actually, yeah, that was meant to be. Right. Um, and, you know, it's it's about making choices, isn't it, Then after, thereafter? Do, when you interview people now, do you uh, do you always like you never want to say no to someone because you remember what it was like? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, because I don't have my own internal team. However, I am, you know, working uh, with with teams externally, so I'm outsourcing and stuff like that. So it's quite a nice place to be because then I've already kind of, uh, you know, sourced them out or they've been uh, referred to me in that sense, but. Yeah, there are certain conversations that I, I remember that I had when I was being interviewed or being put forward for, you know, uh, roles and stuff like that, that, that do come up in, in that sense. By the way, that's a really interesting model as well. I mean, a lot of people think they need to build a big internal team, but in a way, having an external partnership system can be much easier. In fact, that kind of feeds into your, your story quite well, isn't it? That someone comes for a job interview, but you say, instead of working for me, why don't you work for yourself and we'll team up? It's almost like then you never have to reject anyone if they're willing to go and start their own business and team up. Then, then you're you know one plus one equals eleven as opposed to you, you know, having to necessarily employ people. Yeah, absolutely. I've I've ended up actually mentoring a couple of uh, um, graphic designers in 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 that sense, and it's just lovely to see where they've now kind of got to as well. And that was like very in you know wasn't intentionally. That wasn't, you know, the, the sort of intention behind it initially. They were just asking, you know, do you have any jobs? And, um, yeah, it was just nice to give them a bit of guidance because over time people have taken the time out for me and given me guidance. And, you know, it's that whole pay it forward. You just never know how you can help somebody. Totally. I love that. Well, I I, um, I know that you believe that uh, if brand isn't clear on the inside, it's not clear on the outside. So talk people through a little bit about brand strategy. A lot of people, perhaps when they hear the word brand, might think it's just a logo. You and I probably know that's not the case, but explain to people that don't understand brand a little bit about how it all works. Yeah, absolutely. And um, the reason I can sort of fully say that with conviction and confidence is because I've been in the place when it's not being clear on the inside and then I've also been in the place when, you know, it, it is clear on the outside and I've noticed the the differences and the outcomes and, you know, how, how beneficial it has been. So I'll, I'll share a little bit of my own example, actually. So when I first started my business, I was a bit like, you know, I, I do everything. I do branding, marketing, design. I do everything kind of thing. And I'd, I'd have people come to me and say, right, OK, can, can you um, can you look after my trust pilot account can you do my email marketing can you do this can and I was like oh no not really it's not that's not what I really want to be doing and then I you know had this sort of realization well obviously it's because I'm like putting myself out as everything and I also didn't really really truly understand the difference between brand branding marketing all of these different things you know and how they actually lead into each other um, so, you know, it was more about just, oh, just, just get it, get it, get it, getting out there. And, you know, I was almost like just chasing another, another invoice. So what actually happened in, in the beginning of the starting of, of my, um, business journey, I came across a, a brand course and I also came across coaching, uh, personal performance coaching. And I got my, um, I got my diploma. I was like, this is something I absolutely want as part of my life and some something I can help to serve my clients better with. So what it really allowed me to do is go inwardly and help me to understand that actually when you have that sort of ownership of who you are as a brand and have that alignment about what your brand is, who it's for, 
what it stands for, why you are doing what you are doing, it then feeds into other things around the vision, around your values, around you know the, the type of people you want to serve, the audience that you do actually really want to work with. So you have a lot more clarity and focus. And in a sequential approach, your brand starts then informing your branding and the branding then starts informing the marketing. A lot of businesses, including myself, when I first started, was very much about uh, you know, let, let's get the that, that logo done. Let's get the website done. Let's get the marketing done. Let's get some posts on social media. And then what happens? Six months, a year later, they feel like they've just hit a roadblock. And, you know, these are the clients that I end up, you know, even working with now. It could be a, a year, three months, because, you know, we start off and we feel really enthusiastic and you get a bit of friends and family support and stuff like that. But then that fizzles out because they're not always your actual target audience you know yeah they're they're cheering you on but actually that you know you need to ask yourself are you running a business or are you building a meaningful brand oh it's it's such great insights there i mean at the point you just mentioned there too about like your circle perhaps at the beginning are enthusiastic for you they're happy for you but then they're not your target demographic so they don't understand it it's something i've experienced so many times you know we used to do ad campaigns and charge a million pounds to do it. And my family would be like, no one's ever going to pay that, you know, but they're not the demographic. It's a really good point, isn't it? You know, we do, we do go, what do you think of my logo to the family and friends? And they're like, oh, I don't really like it. Well, they're not maybe the target audience anyway. So, Yeah, yeah. And it's always interesting because um, initially, you know, when I do like brand identity creation and stuff and they'll be like, uh, clients will be like, oh, I just need to ask my, I don't know, my wife, my husband, my next door neighbor, my family, friends, the dog and whatever. And you're like, oh, come on. You know, we, it, it's it's what you do need to, if you really want to ask, go and ask your audience, your your ideal audience. It's so obvious when you say it, but I bet people listening are not doing that enough. You know, it's easier just to ask a friend when you're having a cup of tea with them on a Sunday or something, you know, they naturally take the time to go and talk to your actual customers. But it, it, it's so so important. I just want to take a moment to thank Taylor Brands for sponsoring this podcast. Have you ever been told you can easily start a business that will make money while you sleep, only to realize it takes a ton of work to get a business started? Taylor Brands makes starting a business easy. With its AI-powered platform, you can get your business a logo, social media designs, printed merchandise, and so much more, all in just a few clicks. That's why I love Taylor Brands. Whatever your idea is, you can make it look legit in a day and actually start selling through the Taylor Brands platform. For 40% off your first order, check out the links in the podcast notes below and use the code PEP. Now, let's get back to the podcast. Tell us a little bit about the um, the actual brand process that you go through. So you know, where, where do you actually start? Because I love this whole, you know, clear on the inside um if it's not clear on the inside it's not clear on the outside i do love this and i I wonder what clear on the inside actually means how do you get to clear on the inside so what i've created is um, a framework and it's called a, a brand discovery workshop and this framework that i've created takes people step by step by you know through through different slides that i've i've um put together that helps them one understand what a brand is because everyone's got different ideas of, of brand. Um, so, you know, I've, from the learnings that I've had through, you know, things that I've sort of, uh, developed my skills from, I've now pulled these things together and, you know, I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page when we talk about brand. So, you know, it starts off with, you know, what is a brand, the importance of a brand. And then throughout the framework, what I am doing is actually also sharing examples of how other brands have become successful, what's at the core of their business. So it gets my clients to really start thinking and also visualizing and imagining, actually, this could be my brand. Um, So, you know, it it helps them to to, to connect in in that sense of what does a purpose, what does a brand's purpose look like? What does the brand's purpose for me look like? And then, you know, we look into the vision and those growth goals and then the values and all of the other attributes that make a brand a brand. So from the positioning, the USP, you know, the the target audience, but it's not only the target audience, it's more about the buyer's state of mind. Um, Really, really important to understand. Again, you know, a lot of businesses miss these really crucial things out and then they wonder like, 
Why am I not talking to my relevant target? Why are they not coming to me? Why am I not pulling in, you know, this kind of audience? And what they then end up feeling like they're doing is just pushing, pushing, pushing all this marketing out, but no return in terms of pulling an audience in. So, you know, taking that time to really delve in deep and, you know, have that alignment and understanding because working from the inside out allows you to then go externally and say, right, this is what I am about. This is who I serve. This is how I can help you in, you know, um, whether, you know, whatever that service is in, but helping your audience to get to where they want um, and, you know, experiencing the outcomes that they want. Um, because, you know, there's there's so many new businesses out there. So it's about, you know, brand is very much about it's an identity the business is the pro, you know the the product or service that you sell now it's about packaging it up into an identity and that identity is the brand it's part of that that brand you know there's that uh, very famous um saying by jeff jeff bezos um your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room so i like to take that a couple of steps back and actually get my clients to think about a brand is a created perception and it is those percep perceptions that form beliefs in people's mind about your brand. So what are you intentionally doing to create that emotional connection with your audience? So when they do walk out of the room, they are thinking about you in the way that you would actually like them to think about you. You know, um, I've, I've run this um, test many a times, many a times, and I've said, you know, pulled up in a workshop, whether it's been 100 people, one-to-one, -one, and I've said, you know, um, John Lewis. And actually, I'll ask you, Simon, John Lewis, what words would you associate with their brand? I, I, I feel like trust is a big one, and I feel like they're people that work there own it. That always appeals to me. There's that, it's, they're not just selling me something, a big corporation there's there's almost like a, a community piece there that that, that, that appeals to me. No, I guess quality. But I feel like you can trust their their product quality. I'm smiling here because I kid you not. Every single time I've run this, quality, trust, reliability, one of these words will come up. That's no coincidence. John Lewis have done everything through their communications, marketing, everything mm. to make us think about them and perceive them. In this way, and it's funny. I've had some pretty bad experiences with John Lewis, uh, and I still feel that about them. You know, I bought a camera lens for them, for example, and it was completely the wrong camera lens. And um, it was it just I've had some really awful experiences, but somehow I still feel that way about the brand. And and I think it's things like they offer two years guarantee on stuff instead of one. When everyone else is doing one, they're offering two. It's, it is. It's not just the image of the brand. It's their actions that they take. Right. It's how they deal with a problem. So it's. Um, yeah, I think I think the other thing you know what, what I love about what you're uh, sharing here as well. I, I my translation in part is that um, people should tell a story, right? It's not it's not just this is our product you want to buy it, but it, it's literally and you did it really well in your introduction about yourself. You know, like almost like the underdog, the 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 person that no one believed in has has proved that you know you, you you're brilliant and and you can help people and so that that's that people resonate with that story because we all feel like that at points right so yeah yeah and again that that means you know that that whole thing of going inside for that clarity right it comes well, authenticity back into, as well right There's, yeah i think that yeah that clarity internally where you're honest yeah and it's about identifying taking that time to step back and identify how have I come to where I have come? What, what, you know, what, what, what's happened in my life? And these are the kind of things that then starts forming the stories that you can then share, you know, in, in your social, in your content, on your website and all of those kind of things. So a lot of business owners miss this big step and then sort of feel like they're blending in. They're feeling like it's the same, same, you know, all the messaging and stuff like that. Um, I remember there was a client I worked with uh, a few months ago and she was just like, oh, see, I, I just feel like giving up. You know, my, um, she was in, doing hair products. She felt like she was in a very saturated market. All her messaging just felt like it was the same as others. And we, you know, we, we did a session and we delved more around 
her purpose. And we talked about her journey up until why she was doing what she was doing. I kept on digging, digging, digging. And she was like, well, I want to be number one in the beauty hair industry. I was like, that's, that's not enough of, of a why. And, you know, kept on digging. This is now with my coaching hat on, um, digging. And, and actually she told me a bit about her personal story and some of the trauma and whatever. And actually she then hit on it. She was like, well, actually I want to positively nurture people. And that, that, when she hit on that, her eyes lit up, her face lit up, and she just, you could just see, she was like, right, I'm back in business. You know, it wasn't just about the hair products. Now, she's just like, I can run workshops, I can run this, I can do this, I can create other product lines, you know, because at the core of who she is and at, for her business, it's about positively nurturing. When she hires a team and she's briefing them, this is what we stand for. This is why we are doing what we are doing. And you can see how that can create so many more opportunities as opposed to just going out and saying, right, this is our product. This is what we do. And this is what it does. It's so true. And I hope the listeners pick up on this very important nuance you've just mentioned there. You know, it's not about becoming the number one hair brand because actually consumers don't really care about that. You care about that. But people will connect to that story, that, that origin story or that, that personal feeling you have, that destiny. And that, that will um, create a, almost like a, a, a tribe around you that, that care about the same thing as well. It's, and, and I think, you know, in, in, uh, uh, conscious of time, I'd love to just talk about performance. But I feel like performance is going to be connected to purpose. If you're sounds like that person's fired up about their purpose, then, then their performance lifts because it's no longer work. It's no longer a chore to become number one. It's destiny. So am I, am I, am I right? You know, is that how people f tap into performance? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, we know that life happens. Things will happen in, in your life. It's not business life, personal life, and, you know, one will switch off and the other one carries on. We know that things, are, well, we just know in the last two years with COVID and everything, you know, things can just change just like that. But when you are driven and you have a, you know, real kind of purpose and understand that purpose, that's what helps you to get through and, you know, grow your business, create an impact, scale it, create new opportunities um, and just do, you know, do what you're doing. And like I said, have that drive behind it, whether it's, a, you know, whether you're driving in the fifth gear or whether you're driving in the first gear, it, it doesn't matter. But what does matter is that, you know, having that purpose the vision as well is equally important. Knowing what you are working working towards um, does make a difference. Obviously, you know, that, that may change a little bit here and there, but just having that real understanding of, you know, why am I really doing what I'm doing? And what I noticed during um, COVID and stuff, the businesses that continue, like, you know, that were sort of more purpose-driven, whether, you know, that they, they were able to adapt and evolve quicker than some of some of the other ones because it was almost like well actually I don't know now if I can't sell a product you know do this in person the ones that I what I observed and some of the ones in my network they, they just shifted you know they're like right no I want to make sure that people are still having you know getting their yoga classes having that well-being it's really important for me for them to have that you know connect to their own well-being so you know they hook or by crook they learn you know how to deliver online and you know these people some of them never touch this kind of zoom and classes and stuff and now they you know they've, they've shifted their business in a in a different way i mean it's such a great point to end the podcast people need to tap into that purpose because it will drive you to pivot and things will change all the time right now of course yes we've had uh, rather uh, a strange time and we've had to pivot into things like zoom but there's always going to be that in history but if you're doing what you love you will find a way and if you don't do uh, what you love you probably give up <laughs> and because it's oh suddenly you've got to learn all this new technology or invest in the new technology and you don't want to invest in all that new technology because you're probably not loving what you're doing so you won't so right so so it's such a valuable um insight i want to thank you Artie, for coming on the podcast today and sharing your knowledge about brand and, and performance and we'd love to have you back on another time thank you so much my absolute pleasure and thank you again for giving me this opportunity um yeah if you, if you know me you, uh, you'll know that like i said coming back to my own brand's purpose which is to educate and empower business owners to mindfully define their brand and use it with intent joy and impact so anytime i get moments to talk about brand i will yeah but you have a wonderful purpose and i love i love your story thank you again thank you thank you simon
Thanks for listening to Pep Talk. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow The Purposeful Project on all our social media channels where we're giving away even more free business secrets and entrepreneurial value. Again, we'd like to thank our sponsor GoDaddy for powering this podcast. From naming a business to buying a domain name to building your website for free, GoDaddy has you covered. For 40% off GoDaddy tools, click the link in the podcast note below and use the code GDXPEPTALK. See you next time, entrepreneurs. And remember, you're not alone.